Many of us have heard highly educated people, scientists, architects, engineers, and the like, say that the Great Pyramids of Giza are such awesome feats of engineering that even using modern day construction equipment, constructing them in the 21st century would be well nigh impossible. This is one reason why some alternative researchers have toyed with the radical hypothesis that the Egyptian pyramids were in fact the product of an extraterrestrial civilization, and that their function was either that of a generator of some unknown energy or as a means of communication with other planets. Well, what can we say? Only that there have always been people keen to take advantage of other people's willingness to believe in the miraculous, especially when it comes to explaining the Great Pyramids of Giza, long considered one of the so-called Seven Wonders of the World. The previous film provided ample evidence that not so long ago, in the 16th and 17th centuries, there were quite large limestone hills in place of these pyramids, and these hills, in turn, were topped with old pointy pyramids. And the new, modern pyramids did not exist until the 17th century, and that about 80% of their volume is in fact comprised of limestone hills which were previously topped with the old pointy pyramids. So the Great Pyramids of Giza are hills covered with limestone blocks taken from the very same limestone hills. To make it less noticeable, the other hills around the Pyramid of Khafre were leveled to the ground. This was done before the 19th century. Of course, Egyptologists know that almost all Egyptian pyramids were once hills, and their significant part is solid rock, which is covered with blocks of the same hills only on the outside. But there's little benefit to be had from dispelling the myth that the entire pyramid was constructed of blocks since the Great Mystery. The secret of building the Great Pyramids attracts crowds of tourists, and its exposure to reality would have the effect of drastically reducing their flow. The second proof for the hypothesis or version that the pyramids of Giza were constructed by an advanced extraterrestrial, or so called pre flood, civilization is the accuracy of orienting the pyramids to the cardinal points. Adherents of ancient, advanced civilizations believed that this was only possible using analogs of modern devices such as GPS navigator, theodolite, or total station. This reduces specific and precise figures. Let's look at an article by Stanislav Grigoriev, Ph.D. in History at the Institute of History and Archaeology at Chelyabinsk in Russia. The article was published in Archaeoastronomy and Ancient Technologies, an international scientific journal. The article is called The Orientation of the Egyptian Pyramids' Faces and Obtaining the Divine Essence. Deviation from the direction of the true or geographical north of the Pyramid of Khufu, we also know it as the Great Pyramid of Giza, is three arc minutes. One arc minute equals one sixtieth degree of arc. The value of the Pyramid of Khafre or of Shefren is six arc minutes. Minus six arc minutes means a deviation to the left from the North Pole. The value of the Pyramid of Menkari is plus 14 arc minutes, which means a deviation to the right from the North Pole. As you can see, all three of the Great Pyramids have quite small deviations. This causes modern researchers to assume that the ancient Egyptians, or those who built these pyramids, used analogs of modern geodetic devices, since conventional tools of orientation like a compass, by the way, we should also note that the North Magnetic Pole is not the same as the North Geographical Pole, or orientation to the pole star without optical devices can't provide this accuracy. So, the true North, or the North Geographical Pole, is the point where the Earth's axis of rotation intersects its surface in the Northern Hemisphere. But there's another way of determining the direction to the north, via solar shadow, the shortest length of which for the entire daylight hours points right to the true north for the northern hemisphere. But this method is not very accurate. However, the solar shadow could well be used to orient the Egyptian pyramids' faces to the cardinal points with high accuracy, 
without the use of modern geodetic devices. And this was proved by Glenn Dash, an American engineer. He published the findings of his experiment in the Journal of Ancient Egyptian Architecture, 2017, Volume 2. In summer, the path of the solar shadow from a pole, for example, curves around the pole and seemingly goes behind it. As in summer, northwest, we are considering how this works in the northern hemisphere where the Egyptian pyramids are located. It is the other way round in winter. The sun rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest. So the shadow path in winter is curved the other way from the path in summer. And only during the spring or autumnal equinox, the end or tip of the shadow goes strictly in a straight line. And you can see the line twice a year, and it runs strictly from east to west at any latitude except, of course, at the poles. Glenn Dash was surprised that no one had ever tried the experiment before. Apparently, this was because everyone was sure beforehand that it wouldn't provide the required accuracy. On September 22, 2016, at 8 a.m., on the day of the autumnal equinox, he marked the path of the shadow from the pole with a sharp tip with dots on paper. The test provided a deviation within 1.5 arc minutes of the expected value. Based on the experiment, he concluded that pyramid constructors could well use the solar nomen method to mark a site for the construction, strictly to the cardinal points. The long shadow could be obtained, for example, using an obelisk. The higher the obelisk, the more accurate the shadow line from it in the east-west direction and the north-south line is perpendicular to the east-west line, which can easily be oriented by means of the so-called Egyptian triangle. Of course, that's all well and good. The shadow from the obelisk, equinox. But if the Great Pyramids of Giza were built in the 17th century, the required accuracy could also be obtained by theodolite, which was created almost right after the invention of the spyglass. Glenn Dash used a total station as a checking device, a more advanced analog of theodolite with additional options, setting it to the pole star. And in the 17th century, people adjusted theodolites to the north star without waiting for another day of the equinox. The word theodolite was first mentioned in the Geodesy textbook by Leonard Diggis in 1571. In our next film, we will discuss another big tourist attraction the largest obelisk in the world, the so-called unfinished obelisk. While Egyptologists date it to the 15th century before Christ, making it three and a half thousand years old, the reality is it is nothing more than a tourist facility constructed in the early 1920s.